We're about to recruit the help of our favorite Wonderland characters in Tea for Two, a great two-player game from Space Cowboys. Hi, I'm Andy at Board Game Barrister, and this play along tutorial was designed for you to play along with your own copy of the game as we go. But if you don't have the game, no worries, we're going to go through all the rules on screen so you can still learn the game and see how it plays. If you do have your own copy of the game, feel free to grab that game box and we'll get started now. Let's get started by opening the box and retrieving our game components. You should have a scoreboard, five objective tiles, two player pawns, a series of teacup, hourglass, and tart tokens, a pocket watch board and a flamingo token, and 50 character cards. There will be times throughout this tutorial where I suggest that you pause the video while you get caught up in your own game. Let's take our first pause now while you get your box open and your pieces out on the table. And if you haven't already assembled your pocket watch board, put it together as shown on the first page of your rulebook. Okay, now let's get set up for your first game. Place the scoreboard off to one side of your play area, and the two player pawns on the zero space of the score track. Choose which player will play which color. Then shuffle up the five objective tiles and randomly position them, with either side face up, on the five spaces of the scoreboard. Now both players should take the nine cards numbered one through nine that match the color of their player pawns. Shuffle those cards in a face down stack to create your draw pile. Place the two teacup tokens on the space 25 of the score track, sort the 25 remaining character cards by their values and place them face up on the matching scoreboard spaces, randomly choose one player to take one tart and the pink flamingo token, the other player takes three tarts. The remaining supply of tokens, the rabbit cards, and the pocket watch should be placed within reach of both players, with the pocket watch's hand pointing randomly at one of its spaces. And lastly, turn your rulebook to its back cover. Here you'll find the references for what the symbols mean on the pocket watch and the scoring tokens. Let's take another pause here while you get your game set up as shown. Alright, we're ready to start playing. Remember, this is a learning game, so you don't have to worry about making the optimal decisions this time through. The first game never counts, right? Now, one of the most enjoyable features of this game is that there is no turn taking, so no waiting for your opponent to take a turn before you can make your next move. Instead, every round of the game is a duel, where you and your opponent will both flip the top card of your draw pile and compare their values. The winner is the player with the higher card value, and they'll get to take one of two special actions as a reward. If your duel is a tie, the player who possesses the pink flamingo wins the duel. Action option number one is to activate the ability of the character you revealed this round. For instance, activating the knave gains you three tarts from the supply. Option two is to buy a new card for your deck. Each card's cost is the same as its number value, and you get purchase points equal to the difference between your card and your opponent's. So if you reveal Alice with value 8, and your opponent flips the Dormouse with value of only 2, you win and have 6 purchase points, so you could buy a Caterpillar or anything of lower value. When buying, you also have the option to discard any number of tarts to increase your purchase points by 1 each. So in this case, discarding 2 tarts means you could get 2 extra buying points and buy another Alice card this turn. Your purchased card goes into your discard pile, and will be shuffled into your deck the next time you run out of cards. Before we do our first duel, let's have a quick look at all the characters' abilities. These abilities are represented in icons on the cards, but some of those icons warrant a little further explanation. I'll leave a cheat sheet up while you're taking your turns, so don't feel like you need to memorize all these abilities. The Cheshire Cat allows you to move the Hourglass Hand to any space and apply its effect. Remember to refer to the back of the rulebook for these effects. The Dormouse gains you two tarts from the supply. The Guards force your opponent to reveal and discard the top three cards of their deck. The Executioner destroys the top card of your opponent's draw pile. When you destroy a card, place it face up on your side of the scoreboard, and if there are any stars shown on the card, move your player pawn forward that many spaces on the score track. The Knave gains you three tarts from the supply. The Caterpillar gains you two hourglasses from the supply. The King gains you either two tarts from the supply or control of the Pink Flamingo. Alice gains you one hourglass from the supply, and the Queen and the Rabbit both destroy the top card of a scoreboard character pile of your choice. Okay, we'll leave these abilities up while you complete your first duel. Both players should flip their top card now and determine who wins. Pause here while the winner decides whether to activate their winning card's ability, or to purchase a new card using the difference between the revealed cards and any tarts they wish to discard. Unpause when you've completed the action of your choice. 
Congratulations to our first duel winner! There will be many more duels, so you'll both have plenty of choices to make as the game continues. You may be wondering what the point of the hourglasses is. Well, now's the time they become relevant. After winning a duel and choosing how to use your victory, the winning player also has one more opportunity to discard one or more hourglasses and move the pocket watch's hand that many spaces clockwise. The space it lands on will activate its effect. This effect only occurs when you discard at least one hourglass. So, our round one winner, if you gained any hourglasses from a character action, you can choose to discard one or more now and apply the pocket watch effect. Pause here if you'd like to take a moment to make the decision, and don't worry about pausing if you have no hourglasses or you don't wish to spend any this turn. You are ready for duel number two. You should pause here and continue to play until both players have had a chance to win a duel and take their winning actions, which are to activate or buy, then spend hourglasses. Unpause once you've both done so, and then we'll talk about the end of the game and the objective tokens. There's one final part of a winner's turn that you'll add now, and that is to check your draw pile. If it's empty, you add a rabbit from the supply to your discard pile, and then flip over your discard and shuffle it to form a fresh draw pile. The same goes for any time you need to reveal or destroy the top card of your draw pile, but that pile is empty. And one final rule. If you go to take tarts or hourglasses from the supply, but the supply is empty, you instead steal the number you need from your opponent. Now let's talk about how the game ends. Over the course of the game, you'll be purchasing new characters off of the scoreboard stacks and acquiring rabbits when your deck needs to be reshuffled. The game ends immediately when four of the five character stacks become empty, or when a player needs to add a rabbit to their deck, but there are no remaining rabbits to be had. You may already have scored some points by destroying cards and gaining stars during the game and you will now have a chance to gain additional points through the objective tiles. Refer to the back of your rulebook again to see how each tile scores. The catch is that only the tiles above empty character piles will be scored at the end of the game. Many of these tiles will have you count up the characters and cards in your entire deck, meaning your draw pile and your discard pile. You can freely combine those piles once the game has concluded. As an example, this tile is above the empty king pile. The reference for this tile tells us that the player who has the most executioners will now score the value of the pile this tile is above, so 7 points. The fact that only the tiles above empty character piles are scored means you will want to pay attention to which characters you and your opponent are buying or destroying, and which are running low. Tiles above remaining characters will simply be ignored. You are now ready to play through your first full game of T for 2. This game has some real depth of strategy in when to activate characters and when to buy, as well as how to work around the new set of objectives each game you play, so you may want to play again as soon as you're done. Thank you for joining me for this play along tutorial. If you'd like to see more videos like it, hit that subscribe button, and you can find more play along tutorials just like it right here. We'll see you next time.